All right. So in this question, 18.33, it says draw both products. So there's two products that are going to be formed here. Um, when we take 4-chloro-2-methyltoluene and we hit it with sodium amide followed by treatment with H, uh, H3O+. plus. So we want to hit it with some dilute acid in the end. All right. So let's see here. What's going to happen is if you look at the blue proton and the red proton, you could technically pull off either one of them. But if you pull off the blue proton, the problem with that is that you would end up with this benzene intermediate. I'll just draw it quickly. And then it wouldn't matter if the nucleophile attacked either of these carbons I have circled in blue. You'd end up with the same product no matter what. So in order to get two regioisomers, right, to get both products, to get two different products, you've got to pull off the proton in red. So let's draw what that would look like. We're going to pull off this proton, which would give us this guy. So give me a second here to draw it. Oops, that's not right. There we go. So we have our two methyl groups like this. We still have our chlorine here. And then we're going to lose the chlorine. So this is the elimination section of our mechanism. Here's our benzene. I'm going to be careful to draw it correctly this time. So I've got this. I've got my triple bond here and my two methyl groups here. So again, and I'm not going to draw the entire mechanism because it's not even asking us to draw the mechanism. But if the amide came in and it, if, it, if it attacked at this carbon, you would end up with this regioisomer, right? You'd have the two methyls here and you'd end up with your amine right here. However, if the am amide, the NH2 minus, and I'll use the red pen for this, if it was to attack this carbon, then after, of course, after the formation of the carb anion and the extra step, which I'm not drawing the mechanism for, okay, so there is an extra step, right, because you need HCO plus in the end. Um, for the red one, you would end up with this regioisomer here. So you'd end up with two methyl groups here, your aromatic ring. There you go. So these are the two possible products that you would end up with. Again, I discussed this with my students. And that is, again, if you were to pull off the, the blue proton, there's nothing technically wrong with that. Okay. However, you would only end up with one regioisomer. But if you pull off the proton in red, you end up with a possibility of two regioisomers. All right. There we go. So that answers question 18.33. I have a quick question on that. Shoot. Does that mean that there's, you would likely get more of the uh, product where in red? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that, but that would be my guess. Absolutely, that would be my guess. All right. I mean, just statistically, you would end up with a lot more, right? And since both of the groups are the same size, that would be my hypothesis, is that you would end up with more of the regioisomer in red. However, um, in terms of the yield of regioisomers and benzene uh, uh, or elimination addition reactions, it's not covered at all in our book. So don't don't worry about it a whole lot, but that's a good, definitely a good uh, hypothesis. All right. Well, that in mind, that brings us to the last section, which is 16, section 18.15. There's not much to it. Really, I mean, if you think about chapter 18, what are the what are the subjects that are discussed in this chapter? We spent probably 75 percent of our time looking at electrophilic aromatic substitution. We probably spend 15% of our time maybe looking at uh, SNAR and maybe 5% of the time looking at uh, el elimination addition. I don't know, something like that anyhow. So you can use this flow chart. I mean, you just look at the reagent. Are you making an electrophile? Well, if you do, then you're gonna end up with electrophilic aromatic substitution. Um, are you using a nucleophile? And do you have all the criteria met for air electrophilic aromatic substitution? Do you have a good leaving group? Do you have a strong electron withdrawing group? Is it um, in the ortho or para position relative to the electron withdrawing group? Yes, then it's probably an SNAR. And if it's not, then it's probably an elimination addition reaction. All right. Well, with that, let's take a look. This is the last question that I have in the slide deck, uh, which says draw the most likely mechanism. For, the, for each of the following transformations. Well, there's only one. 
and we have sodium hydroxide at 350 degrees Celsius. We don't have a strong electron withdrawing group. And so we have a good nucleophile, but we don't have an electrophile. So this is definitely going to be an elimination addition reaction, isn't it? It's not set up for an SNAR, right? It's not an electrophilic aromatic sub substitution. It's not an SNAR reaction because we don't fulfill the criteria for that. So this is an elimination, elimination addition reaction. Well, let's draw the mechanism that would occur. Now in this one, I don't have to worry about regio selectivity. If you draw in this proton in red and this proton in blue, either way you get the same thing. So let's draw some arrows here. First thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna eliminate the proton or abstract the proton. We're gonna end up with this carbanion. So I'm just gonna skip ahead here, take some liberties here, okay? And we're gonna end up with something that looks like this, where we have a negative charge on this carbon. We have our bromine, which is a good leaving group. So we're gonna make that leaving group leave, and then we're gonna end up forming what? Benzyne. So let's draw our benzyne molecule. We've got our triple bond here. And again, since we have just benzyne, there's no regioselectivity to take into account here. So our nucleophile is just gonna move in here. Our nucleophile is hydroxide, so OH minus. Been leaving some lone pairs out today, but I think you're old enough for it. There we go. So we end up with our hydroxyl on our aromatic ring here, like this. And now we have a negative charge here. So that's the first part. And then in the last step, we're going to treat that with hydronium, H3O plus. So we'll draw the Lewis structure like that. And the carbanion is going to abstract a proton from here. And we're going to end up with a nice molecule of phenol. And there you have it. That's the mechanism for our elimination addition uh, reaction. Okay, well, if we review the reactions, um, we looked at this towards the beginning of the lecture today. Uh, we looked at bromination and chlorination. Then we move on to nitration with fuming, or sorry, with sulfuric acid and, um, and uh, uh, nitric acid. Then we talked about the installation of a sulfonic acid using concentrated fuming sulfuric acid, then removal using dilute sulfuric acid. This could be used uh, uh, with, as a blocking group. Then we talked about Friedel-Crafts alkylation, Friedel-Crafts acylation. We looked at the limitations for those reactions. What else? We looked at reduction of a nitro, and we looked at um, bromination. Benzylic bromination using excess NBS, which is something that was covered in chapter 17. We looked at um, uh, oxidation of the benzylic position to make a carboxylic acid, a benzylic acid derivative. We looked at the Clemenson reduction, very important reaction in organic chemistry with the zinc mercury amalgam. Then we learned a few other things. We looked at SNAR reactions. So this is an SNAR. You've got to have an electron withdrawing group strong electron withdrawing group. You've got to have a good leaving group, which is usually a halogen. Um, and there you have it. And it's got to be ortho or para to the strong electron withdrawing group. So we fulfill all the requirements there for an SNAR. And then we looked at elimination addition, which involves the formation of a benzyne intermediate. So this is the only time that benzyne comes up so far or has come up so far in our class is in elimination addition. So for that, you'd want to use sodium hydroxide at really high temperature. Of course, you end up with a carbanion, so you have to protonate that in the end. And then we said in terms of regioselectivity, if you were to use a stronger um, base like sodium amide, you don't have to heat it up to 350 degrees Celsius. And after you've formed your benzyne intermediate, which in this case would be, make sure to draw it correctly, which would be this, Right, since the amide could come in and it could attack over here, that would give you this compound. And if it was to attack over here, that would give you this compound. So regioselectivity has to be taken into account when we're looking at elimination addition. 